Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, the S10 is going back under the knife. Since the last episode, I've put a couple hundred miles on the truck and it's done really, really well. The only two big problems that I've noticed is a couple of pesky oil leaks that unfortunately are gonna be kind of invasive to fix. That's gonna be the primary focus of this video, but since I have to go all the way and pull the intake manifold off, I'm gonna be changing things up a bit, putting some high quality stuff back on and you know, giving the top end of the motor a different look. I'm also gonna be segueing into a sweet of awesome upgrades that I'm super excited to share with you guys. This is a complete Holly Sniper fuel injection system. Now this was never the direction I intended to take the S10. I've talked about it plenty enough in previous episodes about uh, you know keeping it old school and carbureted and to be honest the carburetor that I have the Edelbrock ABS2 has been really really awesome but to be honest my curiosity has got the best of me. I already had this stuff sitting on a shelf reserved for another project that I decided to pass on because I don't need any more projects right now. So instead of trying to return this and whatnot, I decided to put it to good use on the S10 and treat it as a fun learning experience because I've heard a lot of really good things about this system. And when I was putting the carburetor on the S10 in the first place, I had a lot of people recommending the sniper system, but again, that you know, plans change, but Anyway, this is a direct bolt-on replacement for a carburetor, and what's most fascinating is that it's a self-tuning system. You just get it all hooked up and go drive, and it does all the calibrations itself, which is just really cool sounding, so we're going to give it a go. I'll start working on the sniper content once I get through with this video, so I'll keep you guys up to date on when to expect that, but back to today's task. I'll also be installing a new intake manifold. This is a Y-And Speed Warrior, and it's just awesome looking. I opted to get the polished, just because I'm going for a more shiny, chrome-themed engine bay, so to speak. These valve covers are especially nice. Like, a lot of this is definitely dress-up, but it's gonna add some important functionality to everything, and I'll explain all of that later in this video. Before we get started, I'd like to extend a huge thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for supporting the channel. If you guys are in need of some stuff, whether it be for maintenance or for a project, check out O'ReillyAuto.com and take advantage of the exclusive discount code SK04, which gets you 20% off of purchases of $100 or more. I'll put a link in the description box below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First things first, got to disconnect the battery and drain the coolant. With the sniper system, I have to install one additional temperature sensor, so I went ahead and pulled the plug out of the driver's side head so I can drain some more coolant. I'm trying to make removing all of the existing fuel lines as easy as possible, so I'm leaving all of this connected. Now I'm going to remove the mechanical fuel pump and pull everything down that way. I didn't want to cut any of the hoses because this took quite a long time to get situated in the first place, so it's all intact, nothing's messed up, and if I can use it on another project in the future, then that just saves a little time. Being that I'm deleting the mechanical fuel pump, I went down to O'Reilly and got this block off plate to cover the hole where the fuel pump would have originally mounted in the block.
I guess at this point I'll start taking off the carburetor. Everything else is out of the way now, so I'm going to go ahead and start pulling the intake bolts. Now I can remove the manifold. When you order a new intake manifold gasket set, you've got the two long pieces that go across the runners and the cooling jackets, and two rubber seals that go across the valley. Now, my main oil leak was at the front of this rubber oil seal. I had another one at the back. I was able to patch the back one with some RTV just to get it by, but this one, I couldn't do it. It just kept finding its way out, so that's why we're in this situation. Depending on who you talk to, some will say to just toss these rubber seals right in the trash and use a bead of RTV instead. I've also heard from some that have had good luck running um, the rubber seals. I think a lot of it depends on if the engine has been rebuilt, what kind of machining was done, and maybe like the tolerances aren't 100% like it would have been from the factory, so that's why a lot of people run RTV. I'm not 100% sure. This isn't me giving any kind of advice necessarily. I'm just reporting on things that I've been told and, and researched and whatnot. So going forward with putting this back together, I'm gonna run the RTV in the front and back and see how it goes. Should work out. And now for the fun part of cleaning all this up. Everything's clean, prepped, and ready to go so I can start laying down my RTV and fit the new gaskets. Well, the directions for the intake manifold actually says don't use the cork or the rubber inseal gaskets included in the gasket kit. Well, I guess that settles that debate. After letting the RTV cure for a few minutes, it's time to install the new manifold. That looks really, really good. Wow, so much shiny, I love it. So the intake manifold is down and the bolts are hand tightened. Everything's looking pretty good, so I'm gonna move on with torquing everything down. There's a specific sequence that you have to follow and three separate stages to get to the final torque. Now to transfer the accessories over to the new manifold. So I realized I overlooked something with this intake manifold. With the Holly Sniper system, I have to add a third temperature sensor. I already had two, one for the electric fans and one for the gauge inside the truck. So 
The Edelbrock manifold that I just pulled off had two sensor provisions in this cooling jacket. This Y-end manifold only has one. Like you saw earlier, I pulled that plug out of the side of the block for you know, another sensor. I'm just going to put the, um, the electric fan switch down there. There's another plug on the other side of the block, but it's really hard to get to, and I'm having trouble getting that plug out, so I'm just going to leave it be. So if you're in a situation like this where you only have two available plugs and you need a third or even a fourth, I found a pretty cool solution that I'm really excited to put on. This is a billet aluminum water neck spacer. It puts the water neck about an inch higher and gives you two sensor provisions, which is super cool. You can get these in different finishes and stuff. Of course, I got the polished one to go with the theme I got going on here. So let's get it all put together. I went ahead and installed one of the valve covers so you guys can get a quick comparison between these Holly Vintage Series covers and the no-name stamped steel covers that were on the engine when I bought it. Now, there isn't anything necessarily wrong with these covers. The biggest problem with the stamped steel, depending on the brand, they can be a little bit more prone to leaks and that's what I was running into. Um, so after <laughs> changing the gaskets a couple times and trying to fiddle with it, I just decided to let those go and get some really nice stuff. These are cast aluminum. They're very, very thick. And while these, I've got the little load displacers across each stud or, you know, where they, where they screw down, these have something similar, but it's just such a thick material that the pressure is more evenly distributed regardless. So this should solve all leak problems and they look really, really nice. I also decided to ditch the tall twisty things just to clean things up. It always bothered me how I never could get them like perfectly even. So I still have the valve cover studs, which I would highly recommend. They are awesome. You can pick them up at O'Reilly and you just, you just thread them in, put the valve cover on and then tighten down your nut. As you can see, this is a whole lot cleaner. It looks great and it was relatively easy to do. All right, the gasket surface is all cleaned up and ready for the new valve cover. First, we'll go ahead and put in the valve cover studs. Well everyone, that just about wraps it up, but before I close the video out, let me at least set the sniper throttle body on top as well as the air cleaner so you can get an idea of what the final outcome is going to look like. This is looking pretty fantastic. One of the coolest things about the Sniper system is that it still has that old school carbureted look. A closer look and you'll be able to see like some of the wires and the TPS sensor on the other side, but even though I wasn't originally planning on doing a fuel injection with this truck, the overall look with everything put together definitely fits the vision of the build. I'm very happy.
And some last minute things to wrap up today's progress. I went ahead and put these hoses back on. I also decided to put the temperature sensor for the electric fans right here instead of in the block over there. It was a little close to that header and I just felt a little uneasy about this wire being there. So since I had an extra port in this spacer, I put it right there, put the plug back in the block. So all of my temperature sensors will be in this little group. I've got the one for the decoder digital gauges, the radiators, and the one in the manifold for the sniper system. I went ahead and got those support brackets back in place too. I had some extra of the bolts that I used for the intake manifold, so I got those in there. I've got the nut down there instead of all the gold hardware that I had before. This just matches everything a little bit better. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to leave a like below. It really helps the video a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. There's a whole lot more content where that came from. Double check that you have that little notification bell selected so you can get properly notified of all of the new uploads. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.